Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoint's Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. You've heard their point, now listen to the counterpoint. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. We're coming at you on March 31st, 2021. Uh, we're about two and a half months into the Biden administration. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it seems to be just a ca- culture of cancellation. But before we get into any of that, uh, let me introduce you to our panel. In our upper left-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Ever, a pilot in the state of California. And in our upper right-hand corner, we have Leon, the word Brathwaite, last word in liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. <laughs> My name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. Uh, so cancel culture. Um, you know, th- th- this time we did a show about a week ago or so on just, you know, sort of a lot of the things are being canceled and a few people in there. But one of the kind of disturbing trends we've noticed lately, too, is people just being canceled on the basis of, of race. And that's... Uh, you know, seems to be certainly going in one direction nowadays. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, one of the most absurd stories I think I've heard uh, lately was the uh, New York Times of all people, you know, these people, democracy dies in darkness and, uh, you know, all these other things the press loves to say about themselves. Uh, you know, they are, uh, they, they actually um, canned one of their reporters uh, earlier this year and I guess he was a, his name was uh, Donald McNell. And I think he was one of their key guys on COVID, I believe. Um, yeah, he was, the, he was the main science reporter. Yeah. And so he was apparently on a trip sponsored by the Times uh, that had, I guess, high school or college students on it. And w- one of them asked him a question about somebody uttering the N word. Okay. The N word, that word that apparently we're, we're supposed to just like not be able to say words nowadays because that's the thing, you know, or, or, or you, you might, in, yeah, you might invoke being canceled as a person. We, we better know, the, be the, careful. Yeah, we yeah. might get fired. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. The power that we have given <laughs> words, you know, is just astounding. But, but what, what was said by this reporter it's bad, is it's bad enough. We have no. Two white guys to one black guy, you know, <laughs> bad enough already. <laughs> hey, as far, as far as the population goes, though, we're overrepresented. We got to worry about the Asians and Hispanics. They're going to oh, be right. upset because they're not represented. <laughs> 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 oh so, yeah and, and we're slightly overrepresented as, as white guys and we have no women so you know yeah. <laughs> unless one of you they, feels that way today i don't know <laughs> and, and they, you're, over, you're overrepresented on, on, on immigrants too also okay <laughs> Take note. Oh, there you go <laughs> yeah and so, and so we really have to be careful because we're already treading on thin ice so we, we say the wrong words and we're gone yeah. well, and that, that's not a joke today that's what's so sad about no, it's it true. That, you know and 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 this is the danger is you know certainly we all you know personally might cancel somebody in our lives if they're just a bore who runs around trying to offend everybody you know that's you know i, I think we all understand that but the idea that people might just say something that that somehow there, there might be an innocent reason for it or whatever, and, and you just got to cancel them because that's the religiosity of the current, you know, yeah. that's in fashion today, essentially. And here with the New York Times, this is how insane it is. He was asked a question by somebody else about, uh, you know, by, by a young person um, about somebody who used the N-word. And so he used the N-word back to them in saying what the proper response to dealing with that situation should be. And he was condemned. And it's funny, too, because the actual, uh, I guess, the editors at the paper, when this first was brought to their attention, they didn't actually, they, they, they just sort of admonished him and told him, hey, look, you know, we got to be careful. And I, I think there was a few little penalties, but th- that was going to be good enough. But there was actually a petition that was sent around by the younger woke people in the organization and they couldn't handle the fact that he had said the n-word and wasn't being canned for it and and so they they got rid of him the gutless new york times you know got rid of a reporter for essentially using freedom of speech to speak their mind about you know an important topic nowadays and i I just can't it's 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 just blows your mind you guys have any thoughts on that i'm wondering how the new york times is doing financially 
Yeah, uh, how close to bankruptcy they are. Yeah. They're heading uh, that way. They're heading yeah. that way, but they're, yeah. still, they're still hanging on. Yeah, I've, I've been hearing this. I mean, you know, they're... they're um, you know their their uh, business model is is gone out of style and so on uh, has been you know usurped by the digital world and the internet and so on. But um, yeah, and so maybe I'm thinking that you know they're they're just barely hanging on and they'll you know they don't need anything. You know, there's the people at the top. I'm not sure if it's totally being gutless or if there is some semblance, I mean, I'm sure that's part of it. Uh, but uh, if there may be some semblance related to their financial position and their tenuous uh, financial position, and they're, they're just trying to hang on, they don't want to rock the boat in any you, way. Yeah, yeah, I don't but, know. But, well, you know, something funny about that, though, is most of these young woke people aren't the people who pay for newspapers. <laughs> no, they're not yeah, the people right. who to pay. They want everything right. for free on them. On them. Yeah. <laughs> the but, you know, the but, it, but you know, the, the, the funny thing about all this, Jason, you just said that this is the life we are, we are in today where people are getting canceled for using words today. But that is not, that is not, that is going on, yes, but that's not really the issue. People are being canceled for words they spoke five years ago, 10 years yeah. ago. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is the horror of this all, that these woke people think that they have this semblance of, 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 of perfection, that they could determine who should, who should eat and who should not eat. Because when you destroy a man's or woman's livelihood, you really determine whether, whether they could eat or not, right? Uh, uh, they could dip into their savings for so long. But the whole, the whole issue here is, the whole issue here is this, this cancer culture, is nothing but poison. It is really and truly a poison. And we are trying, and they are trying to segregate us, to segregate society, not only segregate us in terms of our physical segregation, but segregate us in terms of our thinking. I used to travel on the public train every day my, during my working years. On the southern line of the of, of the Sacramento of, of the of the light rail, we used to go to South Sacramento, and I can tell you almost every day I used to hear that word being spoken, almost every day. The the N word, very popular on, on the train. You listen to any form of hip hop, you're gonna hear the word. It's being used quite often. People are making millions of dollars using that word. <clears throat> But a funny thing happens when that word comes out of the word of a non-black person. All of a sudden, it's offensive. This is the segregation that's going on right now. Our minds are being segregated. You know, George Wallace said a very long time ago, 1963 to be exact, segregation today, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. I can't do his accent, so I wouldn't try. Uh, I'm not as good as Tim. <laughs> but the it point really, is, though, it's really, it's really not that difficult. Well, that's a, to thank you. You'll have to teach me that one, Tim. But the point is, though, we are today living George Wallace's vision. That is what is happening. We are living his vision of segregation forever. And they are finding ways to segregate us. So when I see you guys, I do not see another human being. I must see an evil white person, you mm. know, because whiteness is not a disease, right? And anytime you use that word, I must make sure that you are canceled for it because you have hurt me. Oh, my God, please. You have so hurt me by using that word. This is the madness that we are living in today. We are being segregated, not only physically, but mentally. That's what's going on. Social cannibalism is active and alive in our society. Well, well Leon, it, it, you know, you, you brought up a few excellent points there. And, you know, one, I, I, I just can't help too, but thinking there's some religiosity as well going here that, that you win points by being the person to, to identify and find the bigot for everybody. You know, if you are the one who can point the, the injustice out, you know, even if it's just sort of a make-believe injustice, if you're the one who can get everybody riled up, 
you yes. get the point. You know, you, you're the you're you're the one who gets elevated for this destructive culture. Um, but you know, it's funny. You you brought up some points about the past. Uh, you know, that this isn't just current, like in the case of the New York Times reporter, where he literally, this is something that just happened, I guess, a few months ago with him. But yes. in the case, of, there, there was a gal in this tele, terrible television show called The Bachelor. I, I can't imagine, you know, what it must be like mm. to have nothing better in your life going on that you have time to sit and watch television trash like The Bachelor. But <laughs> where literally a bunch of make-believe people get together for a make-believe relationship <laughs> where they sort of fall in love with 20 cameras on them and and yeah. you know a guy one guy chooses from 20 women who are throwing themselves at him and, and you know it's feminine any if or feminism anybody i don't know <laughs> but anyway uh you know I, I can't imagine a more ridiculous scenario but uh, but what happened in, uh, in the bachelor is just astonishing recently this uh uh the, this one guy he was a black guy who was the bachelor this time and so there was all these different women who were competing for his affection on the show. And so this one white woman was, I guess she was doing pretty good, which, you know, that should be a great sign that we're doing well as a society, yes. that nobody has a problem with this. Yes. And that's wonderful. Uh, but but apparently somebody dug out in her past that about three years ago, she had gone to a sorority fraternity party, I guess, that was an antebellum theme. So yeah. now antebellum theme doesn't mean that they actually had people working as slaves <laughs> out in the yard. It just simply means that people are dressing up, I believe, as the way people dressed up in the old South, kind of exactly. like the way some people dress up as Roman soldiers in Halloween <laughs> and other places where yeah. slavery did exist in those periods too. But for this crime of her going to that, that was brought out and she was uh, uh, immediately shamed on this television show. So they, 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 they made a point of the fact that this was a horrific thing for her to have gone to an antebellum party. Now she is not, being accused of using the n-word she's not being accused of of doing anything else that was derogatory to somebody based on their skin color literally she this this made up crime of having gone to a I'm up party. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> where, where she i mean she didn't even do blackface like like jimmy kimmel or, or yeah or sarah or the governor the governor yes. of um, the, the governor of, of virginia right now well exactly. he was either in blackface or he was wearing a ku klux klan um, who did? Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. So he's still governor. Exactly. But this woman just decided to play dress up in dresses with her friends, essentially. <laughs> and and she is being pilloried for this. And, and, it, and, and you know, the astounding thing. So, so not only is she are they making a big deal about this on the show where they're literally having her give an apology to the black guy that she's trying to date on the show for a crime that she never committed against him. And it's an apology to him for going to this antebellum party, uh, you know, that was before she ever knew him. So I, I the, 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 the logic is just beyond strain. I mean, you just uh, disconnect it. I, it's, it's just beyond anything, but it's, what's even more bizarre is the, uh, the guy who's the host of the show, who'd been the host, I guess, in, since the thing began for like yes. eight or nine years or something. Uh, he apparently said, Hey, you know, come on, let's, let's give this gal a little bit of grace. We don't know, you know, exactly everything about this. And let's just give her the benefit of that. They canceled him. Yeah, he became, <laughs> he became a racist. Yes, he became he a racist. So making a him. statement like that. Yeah, That's I, unbelievable. It, it's just beyond <laughs> imagination. And, and they had her do this whole apology thing. And of course they replaced the white host with the black host. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, it just, but it, it's just absolutely, oh you know, beyond, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'll hand it over to you guys. Hopefully you guys saw the clips. And by the way, we, yeah, we can't is. really show these because of copyright, but we've included the links in our show. So uh, feel free to go there. Yeah. It's just beyond belief. It's, it's literally new age bootlicking just, you know, on, on television. <laughs> none of us are safe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> none of us. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, I guess we better take this under advisement, you know, be better <laughs> walk around on, uh, on eggshells here, uh, and everywhere and never, uh, you know, ex express yourself or never tell people about your past. Or was that another contestant, perhaps a black contestant that brought that up? Uh, we, we, uh, <laughs> I, that's a good that question, but I don't know the answer. But that's a good question. Yeah. And then, and then to watch the, uh, 
the bachelor uh who was uh apparently so narcissistic that he had to take it upon himself to feign this great horrible disappointment in her for this um this past uh uh this past uh, hor horrible thing that she did uh you know to the world by going to the antebellum thing uh oh my gosh uh uh, he he, uh, you know, but you know these guys. They're all this. First of all, they're all getting coached. They're they're all getting coached whether they have something good happen or bad happen. I'm <clears throat> I'm going to take some of this with a grain of salt. I'm I'm not going to rain on our our uh, doom and gloom parade here. But I, yeah, I guess I am. I'm raining you on our doom and gloom parade. You don't you don't you don't think you don't think this girl is really humiliated on TV? Over, over this nonsense? I, 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 th I think that they were all coached, and this is all something to uh, to increase ratings for the show, uh, personally. Um, Even the firing of the, of the host? The host, no, the host was fired in real, Tim. The host was really fired. <laughs> yeah. That was yeah. real. Yeah, I, I yeah, think I'm, um, I'm sure you're right. There's a combination of this going on. Where I think they're, it's, yeah, they're, I think, they're spinning it, and they are yeah. destroying people at the same time. Yeah. I think they're just. Well, okay. See, I don't know, so I really shouldn't say. So you know, my rain may be more like mist on your uh, doom and gloom <laughs> parade here. You know, we we have a, we have a symbol in aviation for mist, and it's Bravo Romeo. The, the the letter B and the for Bravo and the letter R for Romeo B R, and to remember it because it stands when you see that on a on a report uh, weather report it stands for mist, and so to help you remember like what's B R you know crying out loud we we say it's baby rain, baby rain is B R, and yeah. it stands for mist which is baby rain right baby rain. And, yeah. and so that that's what we do to help ourselves remember what the coding of these weather reports are and uh so i am just saying that this whole idea of them being coached and everything is baby mist baby rain on your your doom and gloom parade because you're right that guy got fired and yeah. I'm a, I'm assuming unless that was the whole thing unless it's like unless he came to them you know, six months before and said, hey, in six months, you know, I, I've got another gig I want to do. And can, maybe we can make this work out. Uh, I mean, now, would that be a scheme right there? What sure. do you think of that? Uh, yeah, let's make this all work out and you'll even fire me and I'll I'll come to her. I mean, could they go that far? <laughs> well, it, know. It, you know, it's it's possible, Tim, but I, I don't think that's what happened here. Honestly, I don't. I, I just I don't think so either. I, I am just I so ashamed of these people. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Yes, this adult man. Yeah, I'm talking about the bachelor in this case, the, the tall black guy. Yeah. This adult man acting like a crybaby because <laughs> this girl went to an antebellum party three years prior and you are yeah. offended today? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you are offended today? Seriously? How does, how does he face his friends after that <laughs> performance? <laughs> you, you, you must be a damn wimp. Yeah, yeah, you I know, I saw it. yeah, I couldn't believe it. It's like, <laughs> well, yeah, like, maybe dude. it's part, part of this whole triggered culture, you know. I mean, yeah. you just get triggered, and everybody has to just bow to your emotions, you know. Tell me I, this I, thing. That's what's going on on the campus. Tell me this thing. Spaces. Feelings, <sighs> feelings, feelings, and emotions must stand above morality. Yeah. Come on, <laughs> this is sickness. Yeah, you offended today? Yeah. yeah. Jeez. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, I love it. You know, you know, in the past, it seems like we've had people like this, who who we have to cater to their every whim, emotional whim. They're called kings and dictators. Yeah, <laughs> Usually, exactly. we only have to stomach a few of them. But I mean, we've yeah. got a whole society. Of them. <laughs> How on earth do we manage that? I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, oh my god, like like and in these, that uh, TV and you show. Know, Go ahead, Tim. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I uh, just I was just gonna say, like in the TV show Game of Thrones, where they had that uh I, I used to call him the little twerp, 
you know, the, the little king, the blonde hair. Joffrey. <laughs> Joffrey. <laughs> Joffrey. Yeah, I used to call him the little twerp. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you, you have, now we have, you're right, we have a whole society of Joffreys <laughs> that, to deal with. Uh, go ahead, Leon. <laughs> No, no, I was just I was just gonna say, and these 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 crybabies, these snowflakes, these little wimps, these are the people gonna take us to the our, our utopia. Oh yeah. This is what's gonna happen. These people <laughs> is gonna take us to this post-racial America. Yeah. These wimps, these losers. God help <laughs> us. <laughs> we know we we had a whole bunch of uh, uh items to get to on this. But, you know, we're probably not going to get to most of them. I mean, they're literally, they're just uh, endless stories of this nowadays. Uh, and that's one of the yes. things I was going to tell you, Tim, is as far as if this had happened in a vacuum, this whole Bachelor thing, I would yeah. say, yeah, maybe it's some big stunt because it's just beyond belief. But in the past few yeah. years, this is kind of the norm of where we're going to. And I mean, yeah. it's, just, it's, it's insane. But uh, just to give you an example, though, of that first story that, uh, you know, something to cement that uh, and. And the fact that this isn't just a one-off. Um, so there was a, uh, a coach for uh, TCU uh, University. And I'm, I can't remember which university that is. But TCU. Texas Christian was, University. Texas Christian University. That's it. And this was from um, 2020. And so we had a, a coach, Gary Patterson, who I guess had been a longtime coach of the college. They celebrated him with a statue, you know, for yes. all of his work. He, one of the winningest coaches, you know, out there in his level of football. Um, and uh, yeah, so he had a problem that came up uh, that surfaced in the year 2020, where a player had accused him, not from this year, but he accused him, I believe, in a past year when he had been a player on the team, that he had used the N-word in a... Um, uh, uh, what do you call it? locker room discussion with the players and and so it's it's like you think oh wow that's terrible you know the guy is using the n-word okay well the, the the thing is he used the n-word not to disparage anybody he used the n-word to tell this guy to stop using the n-word right, exactly <laughs> in, the yeah, team, thing, yeah. in the team meetings and he was disciplining the kid he said we're not going to use that word but he used the word to tell him not to use that word. <laughs> yeah. and, and he's getting canceled and i mean that, that and so he had a huge issue where they, they didn't actually wind up firing the coach he had a huge back and forth there was a lot of media around it uh, in 2020, but then he just sort of mysteriously decided to retire at the end of the year. <laughs> so, so I mean, it's it's he may I, I think it may have been an early retirement, but yeah, so, so I, it, it I, I call that, that a cancel. Yeah, <laughs> but it's just hysterical that the I mean, you this is like Spanish Inquisition thinking or something. The idea that anything is as evidence, you know, of of the sin. And here the sin is anything that could be attributed to racism. And here, this man who had coached, you know, uh, essentially generations of black kids playing football, right? And he used the N-word to tell him, don't use that word. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and you know, canceled. you know, and and discuss just, something about that. Yeah. I will bet money. I don't know this for a fact, but I'll bet money. The student who complained about this coach. He probably listens to hip hop music where that word is used all the time. <laughs> I am sure he has it on, on, on when he travels on, on, on the on the rail on the, on the and probably uses it with his friends also. Yeah. And Which and is... he's complaining about this. This is yeah. the madness that's going on. You know, there's a very interesting story. I hope we have time. Let me just tell you this one real quick. Uh, that magazine called Teen Vogue. Okay. This um the they hired this woman, she was going to be the um the editor in chief. She was she was she was not given the job because they discovered she had used some um, some anti Asian um, rhetoric on 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 online some um, some ten years prior social media a lot, long time earlier yeah. yeah long time ago you know the person who was pushing the senior staff who was pushing to have her not get a job it turns out that she had in her past been using some I think it might have been the N word I was I think it was the N word actually. And she had used it online also. And today, today, to date, we haven't found out what they have done to that woman yet. So based upon their own rules, they should fire that woman, okay, on their own rules. But this is nonsense that's going on in our society. 
Yeah, and it's just endless story <clears throat> after endless story. But that uh, brings us into our knucklehead noise patrol. And so that uh, that's a part of the show where we try and find some silly thing that some politician or media person has said. Uh, and this one is related. And this is actually why this is dangerous, because beyond just the, the uh, you know, it, it, all the cases we cited were essentially private cases where, you know, a television show, a newspaper, um, a college, you might be able to make the case maybe a little bit of government influence there, but for, for the most part, private. And these are private people canceling other private people for whatever reason. But in, in the case of government is where this gets really insidious because a lot of these people are voting and they're voting for these racists to go into office and push these ideas, uh, uh, you know, on us via government. And in this case, we have a, uh, a, a Tammy Duckworth. She is a, I believe she's a representative. Um, I'm not sure for, for which state, but she's an uh, Asian American. She's, so she's uh, a Tammy Douglas, I believe it's Illinois. Okay. And, and she's upset that there isn't enough Asian American representation uh, going on in Congress right now, or, or not in Congress, in Biden's administration uh, for his appointees. And so she said, uh, essentially, she said, I am a no vote on the floor on all non-diversity uh, nominees for the Biden administration. She said, I will vote for racial minorities and LGBTQT or LGBTQ, rather. <laughs> Sorry. My alphabet is a little mixed up. <laughs> but LGBTQ. But anybody else, I'm not voting for. Well, who's not a racial minority? Uh, who doesn't fall into, uh, she said she'd vote for racial minorities or LGBTQ, but nobody else. Who, who does that leave? That's just white men. <laughs> right? I, I guess that means white women, too. So I guess she's at least, you know, she's not biasing this on, on uh, you know, gender. But, you know, literally, she's just she, she's not going to vote for essentially any white person. So, you know, that's her way around of saying I, I, I will vote for racial minorities and LGBTQ, but anybody else I'm not voting for. And this person is in our government and they are telling us that they are voting for nominees based on racist reasons. OK, right. and that's that's her thing until until she sees some Asian Americans get put up there by the Biden administration. Well, George Wallace told us, George Wallace told us segregation today, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. And this is what these people are pushing now. Oh, diversity, diversity. Really? Is that really really looking for diversity? What about diversity in thinking? Do they look for that? You know, I never told you guys this, but I really hate what I really hate. Is this expression people of color? Oh God, I hate that word. You wouldn't believe how much I hate that. So what happened? You white people have no color? No, I'm serious. <laughs> you don't? I must have missed that. <laughs> well, I, I won't use that term around you, Leon, because I don't want to be canceled. Tim, do you have any final Yeah, I'm, a, I'm as canceled if you ever call me. If you ever call me a person of color, I don't want you guys. I might cancel you guys. <laughs> I'm fine. Uh, that's that's good. We can leave on that. Awesome. So yeah, you, you know we, we don't we, we're against cancellations on this show, and we won't use POC around Leon anymore, so we don't get canceled. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today, and if we don't get canceled after this show, we'll see you at the next one. Thank you for listening to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast, a production of Libertarian Counterpoint. Watch our shows each week on Comcast Channel 17 in Sacramento.